Okay, hello everybody. Just give me two seconds. I always got to check this. Make sure this is working. I can hear myself. Hopefully you guys can hear me. In the neighborhood. The neighborhood kids are fighting, so if you hear them, that's, that's what it is. Okay, hello everybody. All right, so it looks like we're working. So, hello everybody again. These intros are very crazy. Uh, still super paranoid about whether everything's working. If you don't know anything about streaming, just a side tangent here. In order to get this to work, you have to have like all this software running on one side. Everything just has to be like, just so you got all these uh, volumes and stuff you have to do and if you do anything on your computer during the week you have to spend a good like 20 minutes going back and figuring it all out super annoying but hopefully i so i think i'm starting to get into it so let's see so i just got some notes here we're going to sort of check this out um uh, again welcome everybody uh those who are watching and those who will be watching um uh, last week we looked at the episode six uh, holster and um, all its really idiosync idiosyncrasies. It's really a, a strange holster. Um, it is if you watch last week, you'll see there's just all these little weird things about it that really aren't the same as any other holster. It looks really like a mishmash of a lot of different holsters, a lot of different styles. It really has gives me the impression that whoever created that. Um, was under some serious constraints and some changes may have happened on set um, that sort of uh, changed the overlook, overall look and feel of it, making it really quite weird. Um, if you're interested in that holster at all, um, you can go check out uh, a user by the names of Hugs121, and he's building one over on the uh, uh, Rebel Legion forum. And he's trying to get them it is it as accurate as he can, I think. And so he's indicated that he's got his current version, um, but he'll be changing that um, a little bit more to make it a little bit more accurate, or a little bit more accurate as time goes on, I think. So follow him, watch that, watch that thread, and you know, see what's going on. Um, let's see here. Um, Today, we're going to be looking at common inaccuracies uh, in holsters that you find uh, out there. Not um, not only that people tend to make, but that people are selling. And um, I want to be clear that this is not uh, intended to sort of call anybody out or you know slam anybody's work. I understand that not everybody cares that much um, about total accuracy i know that everybody uh or there's a lot of people out there that just don't um you know just don't really care that much or just don't not that they don't care let me say this a bit different way it's there's a lot of people out there that just don't um they're they're very very happy with what they do and you know what to be fair a lot of the holsters i see out there even though they're not accurate they're were very well made people have put a lot of time and ever effort and love into them and uh and i think that's great and and i think that if they're happy then i'm happy and we should all be happy for them um i'm not an expert by any you know stretch i'm i've just looked at these holsters probably more than anybody else and so my opinion on these um while not an expert opinion i've never seen them in, in while well, i've seen one in real life um, but I haven't seen the other ones, so all of this is just kind of uh, my opinion and guesswork on my part. So don't take what I'm saying as, oh, you know, he he's the, he thinks he's an expert and he thinks he knows what to tell everybody to do. No, this is just my opinion uh, based on the information that I've gathered, and you can take it with a grain of salt. But these are one of the things I've noticed that people do. And I'm going to show some examples today. Um... But I'm going to really just focus on ones that are being sold. And the reason is, is that I'm not going to go and start pulling images from everywhere on all the forms of ones that people have done and, uh, and start slamming them because it's just, 
just not fair, right? Like there's just no, there's no reason to do that. However, if you're selling a holster, um, to me, I think it's fair game. If you're going to sit there and say, I'm making, you know, a, you know, a holster that I'm selling and everything like that, then if you're going to claim accuracy, then you better be accurate. And I think that it's fair to look at them and say, are these actually accurate or not? And, uh, you know, where are you failing and, and stuff like that. So, um, I'll be doing that and I, um, in a little bit. But um, after that, we're just going to work a bit on the, the actual holster itself. Um, you know, this part of the holster, uh, just, it's one of the ones that I have started doing, or parts of the project that I've started doing, but it's sort of been pushed back and back because I've been more focusing on the pouches and, and a couple other things like that. So um, we'll look at that today. I'll work a little bit on that, uh, the, the pattern part of it. And, and then we'll go from there. Uh, and we're also going to talk a little bit about the difference be differences between the Denix and the Mauser. And if you don't know what I mean, this is the... Th this originally was a Mauser uh, firearm pistol. And, uh, and it, it sort of was co-opted, I guess, or whatever, used as the base for the, uh, the DL-44, what they call it. Um, and we're going to look at that and, and see what the differences are between the screen used one and the ones that are available to most of us. Um, so before we start getting into the inaccuracies or the common inaccuracies, I just want to say that, uh, that I know a lot of you people aren't 100% concerned with accuracy and, you know, a stitch here and a cut there and a measurement there isn't really that big of a deal. Uh, and, and honestly, to be quite honest, most people, 99.9% .9 of the people just don't care. Um, you know, you go to a convention, you go to a costume party or something, people are going to just be impressed if it's like, you know, 60% there. So I know not everybody cares that much. Uh, the purpose of this project, obviously, is to get the most accurate, and then you have to make your own de determination f uh, uh, at that point what level you want to go to. I'm going to try to do my best to give you the most accurate pattern, but, you know, not everybody cares. So, with that said, let's go into this. So, pull up my notes here. Okay, so, I think the number one uh, inaccuracy that I see uh, out of all the holsters being sold and made is that people try to, um, or they believe that they're interchangeable for each version of whatever movie they're doing. You know, yeah, you know, if you take the buckles off this one and put them on this one, uh, you're good. You know, it's all the same. And the reality is, is that all four of these holsters are totally different in many ways. Um, and to just simply change the buckles around, um, you know, from an accuracy standpoint, just isn't realistic. Uh, I understand, however, that um, the the reason for doing that, because if you're spending five hundred dollars or whatever it is on a, on a holster um, for, and you want to go and you want to do episode four, or five, or six, or seven, you don't necessarily want to buy four holsters. So I understand that, but. From an accuracy standpoint, it's just not correct. Now, look, if you look at the screen here, we've got uh, one uh, a holster here that is uh, sold. And you can see that's just kind of what they've did. They've done here. Sorry. Um, they've kind of what they've done here is they've just sort of exchanged the belts a little bit, made some minor changes. Like you can see the, the strap. They've kind of, what you know, a little, tried to be a little bit more accurate on the leg strap here. Uh, some different uh, cuts uh, in terms of uh, that, but you know, for the most part, it's it's kind of the same holster. Now, one of the things I have to give them credit for in this is that they they have the groove here on the um, episode four holster, and it doesn't look like they've well, yeah, it looks like they've kind of maybe yes or no, maybe I don't know. It could be actually this could be the uh, episode six. But it doesn't look like they've done so they've kind of this isn't too bad and and that but it's still there's a lot of differences on here that are just copied and like 
and we'll get into that a little bit more so you can see. Um, the pouches, for example, are much different on all, all four. Uh, you know, five, six, and seven are roughly the same. Uh, seven's a little bit different, just keep that in mind. But episode four is completely different than the other two. So just sort of taking these and going, oh, I'll exchange the buckles and stuff. And this is a pretty good example of that. But there's some pretty bad examples of that where people just carbon copy the same holster, sell it off with different buckles and call it a day. So that's not too cool uh, from an ac accuracy standpoint. Um, the next one is uh, is buckles. Uh, let me see if I can kind of... Um, the buckles and the hardware. Um, again, it's um, one of the main... One of the main inconsistencies I see is the buckle shape and size, and it's you know it's forgivable because honestly it takes a lot of work from what I've found to look at all the different angles and figure out whether uh, you know it's two inches or two and a half inches or three inches, uh, how wide it is, all this kind of stuff. It takes a lot of effort, and I understand that most people just sort of trace them out and say you know it's good enough, nobody will notice the difference. But the shape. And the size of the buckles and the hardware itself is really, uh, to me, it makes or breaks the, um, the, the holster. Because if it's too big and the wrong shape, some are really bad. You'll find some holsters out there that they just, it's almost like they didn't even look or they didn't care. But some... Most of them, most of them are pretty okay, but they're just a little bit too big or a little bit too long. Um, the shape of the buckles uh, or these, this area in here, um, it's it's really forgivable. It took me a lot of time and a lot of photos to find something that worked, um, or to find out what the actual shapes of these things were. So I understand, but as long as the sort of principle is the same, where it's sort of it's got the groove out of there and you know it holds the the leather correctly and stuff this isn't too big of a concern but from an accuracy standpoint they are all different they have different grooves in them and they have different shapes to them so um these buckles here are these uh hooks here i guess we'll call it they are people a lot of people sort of just come on a lot of people uh, just sort of look at them once and copy them over. And that's really, uh, to me, can I put this? To me, that's sort of the biggest issue I have is that they're not the same shape on all the holsters and they have different functionality depending on which buckles are on, on the front or back. And so just sort of cu cutting a bunch of the same pattern out and saying, there you go, you're, you're, uh, that's good enough to me isn't accurate at all and, and sometimes it actually makes it look quite bad if we go back to this one i have to give them credit because they were actually able to get rid of the hardware on this one or the the rivets on this one it looks like which is quite accurate which is good so they're different and that's good to, and for my opinion i'm a little distracted right now i've got the dog barking outside the kids are fighting live streaming is hard um so the other the other thing too is that you'll uh, you'll often notice that um the buckles are the wrong the wrong version um the episode four or five uh six and seven all sort of interchange the buckles differently depending on which movie you're looking at so i see a lot of ones where i'm like oh i'm doing an episode four a costume and they have the episode five buckles a configuration on there and that's just you know it's just inaccurate uh, nobody would really notice most people wouldn't care but you know you got to keep that in mind um here's a good example of um I, this is a fairly popular holster here that you can buy it's one of the cheapest ones you can buy um plain and simple never ever buy this holster i don't care how cheap you you know your budget is or whatever don't just don't buy it. it there is nothing accurate about this 
the buckles are the wrong shape. Um, this has, you know, the the um, the buttons are totally in the wrong place, wrong configuration. This pouch is in the completely the wrong spot. This uh, droid collar thing is completely inaccurate. Uh, the shape of everything, just it's just all round wrong in every single way. So if you see this one out there and you you're tempted to buy it because it's only like fifty bucks or something, don't buy it. Spend that fifty bucks on, um, you know, uh, secondhand belts and whatever you can do. Uh, tear apart some old like leather bags or something and and try your hand at making your own because this is just not bad. But this. Is a very good example of some of the inaccuracies you can see on some other belts and some other holsters. It's just so that well, well let's go into that. Um, the the discs and the and the greeblies themselves. Um, I can understand that um, the greeblies are a little bit different because um, it's kind of difficult to get a hold of uh, screen used ones. Screen, gonna hold a hard to get a hold of ones that are that are accurate um the sparklets canisters that i have um were very difficult to get from the uk um the um the carburetor from the uh, model kit i had to buy the entire model kit for i think 60 70 80 bucks or whatever it was just for that one piece or one or two pieces um so it can be kind of difficult and there's a few um a few people that are offering them out there, I can't speak to their accuracy because I they've they made claims that they've used them off the original Lucas archives. Who knows what that means? It's kind of vague wording. Uh, whether they've had them in hand and were able to measure each one, or whether they've just based them off of the Lucas archives, like looking at photos, I don't know. Um, but it can be difficult. The disc itself, there's a couple people that are offering them out there, and they're actually quite. Not quite. I'm not going to say quite, but they are a little off. They're not quite accurate in terms of their whole configuration and their thickness. So that's just something that, unfortunately, you may have to live with if you're not going to manufacture your own. Because in, until such time as um, somebody is able to get something a little bit more accurate, there's really not a lot of options out there, and it's very it's a very specific. Um, uh, a very f specific part that you really can't fake so but that being said i i do notice that on some they're not that accurate and for example we'll use this one again i think this person is using the standard uh, one that's available out there and it's just the size is a little bit off is really all it is in the in the thickness so and and that being said all thicknesses for all the different movies are different as well so little bit of a difference um leather the leather and the stitching now this is actually probably one of the biggest uh issues and i'm going to go back to this other uh, photo here because this is kind of um the the best representation i think of of bad leather now this leather on on these holsters basically is let me just double check here. It's about seven or eight ounces for the belt and the holster. And it's about four or five, I think, four um, or four to six ounces for the, the pouches, except for episode four, which is, I think, a very, very thin, probably two to three ounces. Um, so what ends up happening is that people, and I understand because a lot of people salvage, you know, faux leather or whatever from different bags and stuff like that that they have. And it's very thin and it doesn't really uh you know look right but they have to do it because it's the only option because they don't want to go out and spend a three three hundred dollars on a cowhide or whatever and dye it and cut it and everything so I, I get that but um the leather in order to look right and look substantial has to be that thick and in it has to in order to hold the the, the blaster correctly in order to sit on the hips correctly in order to hold the weight correctly it has to have that thickness of leather so it doesn't start buckling and bending in, in bad shape in a bad way and sort of sag on on you so when you're doing your leather work make sure that you if you're going to commit to this and you're going to commit the time to it my suggestion is 
find the leather that's the right thickness. And I know it's hard because where I live here on the island, it's there's no leather shop anywhere near me. They used to have one downtown, but it went out of business. And the only one is on the mainland, and that's, you know, a four-hour trip and a lot of money to get over on the ferries and stuff. So to have it shipped here is almost impossible because of the cost. So it's tough. Like, if I wanted to go out and buy that leather tomorrow and start this project, it's, you know, it's going to cost me $200 just to get over to the leather shop. And I can't be guaranteed they have it in stock. I can't be guaranteed I'm going to get the right thing or it's going to be on sale or for a good price. So... I understand, but leather is sort of one of the big things. Now, stitching is, this is where you, where I'm really getting into the, um, uh, the, the nitty gritty, I guess, of it. The stitching on, on the holster is, how do I put this? If you do it right, it looks fantastic. If you do it wrong, it looks very amateur. And what I mean is if you, you need to use the right, first you need to use the right um, thread. Uh, the thread that you would use for this leather work is a waxed thread that you can find um, at most leather shops. If you use uh, sewing thread or anything else like that, it ends up looking very too thin. Um, it ends up looking uh, like it, you can't see it from a distance and it just sort of looks like it just doesn't look right so um, you can sort of see on this one this is the right type of um, uh, the right type of uh, thread here it's um, it's nice and thick it's that uh, waxed stuff you can wax your own thread if you want to there's a um, there's some tutorials out there on how to do that with beeswax and such but um, but that's the first thing is to make sure that you get that correct stuff and and don't do black it's tempting to say you know if you if you're doing your your holster you're looking at it going ah you know this tan stuff or this natural it, it, i think it's sold in the in, in natural it's called natural color and you sew it in there and you're like well this just doesn't look correct like it's so bright but that's where you need to weather a little bit you need to get in there you know with some a uh, little bit of paint or a little bit of something and just knock that, that down a little bit and it will naturally darken over time as well uh, but don't use black because black will take out that contrast that you need so the other thing and this the other problem that I see with some holsters is the, sew, the sewing pattern themselves on the episode 4 I'll, I'll use that one as an example because episode um, sorry episode 4 doesn't have any stitching so just keep that in mind we talked about that in a previous episode where just there's no stitching it's glued so episode 4 if you make any episode 4 skip the stitching altogether episode 5 6 and 7 um, the the sewing well episode 5 there's 8 stitches down the side here so if you sort of count from the top you 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 it goes down it comes around and then there's a little less I think there's 6 6 or 7 and then 8 again if you do your uh, stitches too close together, you you know you have like 15 on there or something. It just it doesn't look right. Uh, it, it it looks too thin. It doesn't have that bulk to it it needs. So keep in mind that and when my pattern comes out, I'm gonna have every single stitch correct and I'm gonna mention on there how many um, how many stitches there are on each thing, uh, like from the holster to the pouches to all that kind of stuff. So. You know, you can make sure that you get the stitch uh, distance correct. And then it'll be in the pattern as well. So all you have to do is just poke the holes in the right spots in the pattern and then it'll be it'll be great. But if you're making one without the pattern, just look at some reference photos uh, to be sure that you're not, um, uh, you know, this is probably not the best one, but we'll give me a few seconds to... You can see here, so this is a this is the actual episode four holster and stuff. So you can see that there's you know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches along here. Uh, and it's the same for here, I believe, and here and there. So keep those stitches uh, fairly chunky. Eight, eight here, I think it's uh, I'll double check for you guys later, but I think it's six or seven here. Um, 
and and here as well. So that's just something to look out for. Um, let's see here. Um, okay, edges, burnished edges. Uh, I see a lot of holsters. Now, if you don't know what burnishing is, I'm going to show you this to you guys. Burnishing is when you take the and and finish off the edge of the le uh, leather by essentially rubbing it uh, so quickly that it sort of heats it up and almost, I guess, like polishes the leather. Um, and the reason that you would do that normally is that because is that you want that nice finished look, but it also keeps uh, leather when it uh, when it's raw is very it's got that nice leather texture on the top but on the bottom it's um it's like fuzzy i don't know why that is it's really strange but it the edges are like that as well whenever you cut leather raw leather it's just a fuzzy edge and so when uh, when most people will go and they'll they'll burnish this edge to try to finish it off so it doesn't have all those fuzzies and stuff like that but uh, the problem is, is that the holsters are not burnished, and you can sort of see the difference here. Just look, this is a very smooth edge, where this is a very raw edge. And if you look at the holster itself, this is episode four holster, you can see that the edges are very raw. There's no burnishing, maybe minimal burnishing, just just to sort of knock it down a little bit, maybe on on the uh, belt itself. But you can see it's very fuzzy very raw holsters there's not a lot of um, finishing work done to these so don't go and burnish your edges and make it all nice and finished because it will just not only will it be inaccurate but it just it won't look right it'll look too uh, this the the universe that this these movies are in have, have always been uh, created with like a lived-in feel so making them too crisp and clean and uh, just you know, and you can even see here on this black belt above here, like, it makes no sense why all these uh, holes would be, you know, distressed like this. But somebody came along and kind of pulled and tugged and distressed them a little bit. Apparently Han Solo fluctuates in weight quite a bit when he's out there in space travel. But but keep that in mind, no, no burnishing. Um, the pouch size. Uh, let's go back to this other one here because... Pouch size is really the hardest part, and I understand why. Let's get this one. Pouch size is, is difficult, and I understand why, because uh, there is no, there's not really any patterns for them. Um, people have did their, did their best guess, and I understand that. So when you... Um, when people create them, they tend to make them too long and too wide, and it, they're they're very deceptive. If you look at them, uh, on you know, if you look at the actual one here, it's it's just deceptive because they look big. The pouches look quite big um, to the eye, but when you actually hold this little greebly in your hand, it's very very small. It's a tiny little thing, and and you look at it, and that's what confused me first when I started doing this was that um, I got this little greebly in my hand. I'm like, why is the pouches look so big? And and you'll see a lot uh, um, a lot of the holsters online, they put the greeblies in there and there's all this space on one side or the other and the greebly doesn't fit in there nice and snug. And that's because, um, you know, that's because the pouches are deceptively small. So one of the things you have to look out for now, this here, um, I'm gonna show you guys this one. This is a um, official one being sold, and it's not accurate. It, it goes way too much to the top here, and it goes way too far from the bottom here. It's just not correct. The, the pouches are too long. Uh, they should be cut off a little bit here. And if you go back and take a look, you can see there's there's equal amounts of space on the top and the bottom here. So um, when you're creating your your pouches i see a lot of people that sew them direct all the way to the top or even above the the two inch of the belt and below and you just have to be very careful that you don't do that if you're looking for accuracy because it's just not correct this is not correct i would never buy this holster it's it's awesome it's very well made but from an accuracy standpoint it's just not correct and there's a few other ones that are being sold out there uh as well that just don't have these pouches the correct 
um, length and, and width. So look for that when you're doing yours as well. Uh, the other problem with the um, with the pouches is the uh, the thickness of the leather, and we looked again at that other one. Um, one. This is just this is probably the more in line with episode four, but this is really bad in terms of um, you know uh, thickness for four or five, six, and seven. Four, five, or six, five, six, and seven have. You know the 46 ounce uh, leather on there which makes that nice and thick that's what makes them stand and have that nice rigid feel to them where they don't flop around and they don't cave in on themselves whereas if you look at episode four let's quickly bring that up for a sec wow. episode four you can see that they collapse in on themselves uh, they don't hold that rigid um those edges because they're just the leather I think is so thin that it, it just doesn't behave it's more like a fabric than a, than a leather at that point um, so just keep that in mind of, of the of the leather um, now the biggest inaccuracy that I see with these pouches is spacing now I okay, before I go into that though I understand that everybody's body types are different and so uh, when you're creating a holster, the natural uh, you know, tendency, I think, is to just jam everything as close as you can so it all fits around your waist. I think that by doing that, you take away from the look of the holster. And I think what is what makes more sense to do is there's certain cut points. Now, let me just bring, see if I have one I can bring up for you. You can take a look. Uh, actually, this is probably the best one. So if you look at this uh, holster, you can see that everything is spaced out in a, a certain distance from each other based on Harrison Ford's body type because it was built specifically for him, right? So that fits him and, you know, probably you know, it would today because, you know, he's still in pretty good shape. But for somebody who's much bigger or much skinnier, than Harrison Ford, the, the spacing of these tends to change. Now, here's my suggestion. Instead of spacing everything out differently uh, to fit your body, um, use points here uh, beside the, um, the disc and use points here beside the uh, droid collar. That is where you can expand or contract your pattern. Keep everything else in the right spots but use those two areas to kind of bring it in or out as needed because that will keep everything your buttons all looking correct your pouches and your your droid collar all looking correct uh, but there'll just be a little bit more space on those two sides before the buttons come around and i don't think anybody will notice and i think it will still look really good but if you go in here and you look at the, the spacing of, of this let's just look at this episode uh, five here I, I believe this is about a quarter of an inch I don't I will look at the pattern later maybe if if I, get, if I remember but there's a definite space here and stuff but if you come and look at this this is like what is this right like look at the space here look at the space here I think it's a, a half, quarter inch or half inch here I'm not sure but look on this and this is official one right this is being sold out there and, and if you look at it it's just this it's incorrect and a lot of holsters are like that a lot of holsters are just incorrect in terms of the spacing of the pouches they're all either jammed way too close together or they're spread way too far apart and you know i'm not sure why it, that is the way it is but um let's see back here this one uh, again is not too bad I, I whoever film craft is uh, mp film craft good i gotta give them credit they they've really done a good job at making sure that the spacing because if you look at it they're all their different spacing is is slightly different and it is on all the different holsters so i think they've done a really good good job here on the spacing of these pouches the the spacing of the pouches however on this side of the of it this button pouch is is also quite different from all the different uh, holsters. And this is kind of where they failed a little bit here on 
on this episode four holster this pouch should really be bumped almost up to the side of this it's very close on this one on the other ones it, it goes out a bit further like like it is here so the spacing is just something you have to look out for um that being said the buttons are the other inaccurate part of this is that people tend to either forget buttons or jam the buttons up too close or they put the spacing too far apart or you know any of that kind of stuff or they end up using the wrong size of buttons and it looks um you know they have these two buttons that are the wrong size and they get really jammed and they're really close together and it looks really weird um this um this uh these holsters here did a pretty good job there's some inaccuracies uh, of course with the amount of buttons on some of them but quite a good job i'm gonna get rid of this one because i mean these buttons are nice i mean those look nice right but they're not actually accurate buttons um, and we'll go into that in another day okay so let's see here um the, the final really thing is and i i sort of talked about this a couple minutes ago is the is the uh the size of it um i was gonna bring this up so you guys can look at something a little different um let's go back to this one this is the episode four holster you can see there's no oh i think i may have skipped that just one more thing i want to mention is that what what, what I often see, I think I said a little bit, but what I often see is there's that groove that goes around. And if you look at um, uh, the episode four holster has a groove that goes all the way around here and here and all the way around this belt. Episode five, six, six has it around the holster part, but not around the belt. And seven uh, doesn't have it at all either. So one of the things i noticed that's pretty inaccurate is that people will will put that groove on all of them and um or you know sort of mix and match but it's just not accurate so don't put that groove on there it looks like there's a groove right it's so deceptive on this one but the, but there isn't so um and the last thing i'll go into is um is the 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 fit uh it's like i say it's a very difficult thing to take a holster that was created for a specific person and um and and put it to your own body type because you know it's just that's it's very difficult and you look at uh you know uh, like i talked last week i think a little bit about the fedoras for the indiana jones fedoras and everybody wants it to look like harrison ford's fedora it's the leather jacket is probably a better better uh you know example i have a leather jacket uh, that was made by uh, the guy um, who did the leather jackets for the movies and i'm nowhere near harrison ford's body type so my jacket when i wear it looks you know i think it looks good but it doesn't hang correctly uh, correctly it doesn't hang the same as as harrison it doesn't harrison ford and, and a lot of other people with a lot of different body types on those on the forums and stuff on the uh the indie gear forum that i that i go to it's very difficult for them because they want the jacket to look the exact same as it does on harrison ford on indiana jones and it's just it can't it's just impossible to do so so the, there has to be some ex expectations there about how this will actually work um uh evil ted smith <laughs> congratulations you were like one of my first commenters so it's um thanks for joining us thanks for uh joining me on this stream i uh, hope you're getting something out of it um but like i was saying it's it's very difficult to size it correctly based on body type and you have to kind of just accept that um but that being said what i think people tend to do um is underestimate or overestimate the sizing of this holster based on the photos that they see on harrison ford and so what they'll do is they'll say, well, you know, I, I look at the, you know, I'm looking at this part here on the holster and I'm like, well, it fits here on Harrison Ford, but you know, my, they don't take into consideration their legs are either, you know, five inches longer or, or less. And so they end up cutting it exactly the same. They don't adjust for the, 
the uh, angle of this uh, th this curve here and ends up hanging way down below their knee or something like that. So you have to sort of take this pattern and say, okay, this is as accurate as I can make it, but I have to make it accurate for my body type as well. And so just making it 100% accurate, if you're gonna put it on like a studio model and you're, you're super rich and you have one of those awesome like theaters or something, like, and you wanna put a Harrison Ford or, or a Han Solo statue up there, by all means, make it totally to spec. But if you're making it for yourself, make sure that you size it and that goes for for kids as well if you're making a holster for a kid you have to take this whole holster pattern and size it down accordingly and you know squish it here and there to make sure that it fits on their body type or it just sits you know falls off them and it doesn't look right so so that being said that's sort of the uh the basics of where i find are the most common inaccuracies and they're not that many. Most people do pretty good job of, of understanding how these holsters work um, and sort of uh, do that, uh, you know, they understand how it works and they and they do a really good job of it. So I'm, I'm not gonna sit here and fault anyone for, for trying, but just keep in mind that some of the things that I've said today um, that, will, that will just take your holster just really to the next level, I think, if you kind of keep those things in mind. So with that, let's go into um, the holster itself. I'm gonna close all these uh, down for a minute. Let's get rid of you because you're not useful to us anymore. So let's talk a little bit about the holster. Um, now I'm going to see you best. Let's talk about before we start let's start let's talk about the blaster um this is a a blaster uh just a little bit of history on it if you don't know this blaster is a a mauser uh it's i believe it's from it's old it, it's really strange in that this this originally i think it came out in 1918 or something it was like a world war one uh sidearm and so uh it's it's a very old blaster blaster it's a very old firearm to, to begin with and so they took the original mauser and they added a bunch of greeblies and everything onto it and put you know some extra stuff onto it like this um flash hider and uh you know they took a uh this is for the episode four but this was i believe uh a tank um site for i think maybe a sherman tank i'm not don't quote me on which type of tank it was, but it was a World War II tank, I believe, and it was this is what they used for sighting uh, or seeing out of uh, out of the tank there. And so they've taken that as the uh, the site, and and you know, and it, it sort of goes on there and and that kind of stuff. So um, oh, that side actually. So the original one was was the Mauser, but unfortunately. Um, well, fortunately, somebody has made a replica, and that replica is the Denix replica. Now, the Denix, unfortunately, is fortunately it's fairly accurate in some respects, but unfortunately, it is completely and totally inaccurate in almost every other respect. So, for example, it's much bigger than a Denix or a Mauser, a genuine Mauser. Um, if if you ever hold a genuine Mauser, and I did uh, up at a at a gun show um, a couple of months ago, the size is it's quite significant. Um, there's just differences in how everything really fits. This is this is quite large. Um, even in here in the handle, this is quite different. Um, I wish I might just. Bear with me for two seconds and I'll see if I have. Um, okay, yeah, so here this is actually really good. Okay, so this here, I can't remember which uh, person posted this online, so I'm um, just sorry about that.
Um, the I'm not sure who posted this online, but you can see here up at the top here is a, is a Denix, and you can see the the problems with this with this Denix is that it's uh, it's what they call it, it's fuzzy in terms of like the the molds have been run so many times that they they're starting to the details are starting to break down a little bit and you're getting fuzzy edges where on a genuine mauser if you kind of look at this one down here you can see it's very you know they're, they're machined each one is machined so uh, you have these machine marks it's very crisp it's very different but if you look at the two um and these are actually these two here are our genuine mausers i believe like this there was one that had a uh, uh, a nine on there or whatever for some reasons one of the models but if you look at the two difference the differences between the three you'll see very clearly that the genuine mauser is much smaller in many ways than the than the denix um especially you can see it in here where the uh, uh where the um i should know this uh the feeding path here is is that uh it's it's much different in, in terms of its size as well in, in here uh, in the barrel here you can see that it's much thicker on the on the denix so that makes a huge difference in terms of how this works in, in accuracy because the problem is is that i mean unless you're very very fortunate to actually have a real mauser um you know there's no way that you're going to be able to get a hold of one uh normally and even then like i can get a hold i can with my firearm license that i have here um i have the ability to purchase a a genuine mauser the problem is is that due to the laws here in canada if i brought it anywhere outside of the house um you know i'd have the uh, the swat team you know down on me because it's just not it's just not legal to do that now i can even if i was to uh, disable it uh take the firing pins out and get it professionally disabled walking around with that uh outside would be uh it would be very gray area uh you're not in, in my country you're not allowed to take a firearm outside a restricted firearm they're called you're not allowed to take a restricted firearm outside at all uh, unless it's locked up correctly and you can only take it to certain areas and, and fire them in certain areas. So a genuine Mauser would be impossible for me to use. Uh, I can use a resin version and that's, we'll get into that in two seconds, but um, the, uh, the really the best alternative for most people is the Denix. And so this is because the Denix you can order anywhere, especially if you're in the United States, you can order it anywhere really it's it's very easy to get they're not that expensive i think they're only less than a hundred dollars i believe the you know you can get them shipped to your front door and it's and there's no restrictions on them at all in canada you're actually it's a gray area because of the the age of the 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 firearm and it's because it's a replica there's some gray area as to whether it's legal to have them or not. So I guess if anybody wants to swap me right now and get my Denix take, taken away, then I, they can do that. But, um, like, uh, let's go. Here. So, but the, the thing is, is that most people are going to get a hold of the Denix. And I think that that's just something that, um, we're going to have to accept with this because I don't think it makes any sense personally to create a, uh, uh, a holster that can't fit anything, right? Like it just doesn't make any sense. So if we were to create a, a pattern for for the actual genuine, genuine Mauser, there'd be no way anybody would be able to ever get their um their uh blaster in there it would just it would be too small so i'm going to what i'm going to do is i'm going to create the pattern for this uh using the denix 
and I may if like I say I can get a hold of an actual Mauser and I may adjust the pattern for those people that have those um, that want those but I can't guarantee that um, I would like to make uh, the person that owns the, the Mauser has said that I can take molds of it so I'm going to create uh, try to create a, a resin copy and then that way I can kind of work from there but I can't guarantee that the pattern's going to have the, the Mauser version so anyway blah 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 I'm rambling on about that so let's work on on this um, I think that's you know enough background for uh, for this for now but let's this was my original um, maybe I should do it the right way here this was my original pattern um, concept that I, I had tried and I did it in the foam the thinner foam which is probably was my first mistake but uh, I realized fairly quickly when I got it inside there that it just you know it, it wasn't correct not only was it was it not correct in terms of the the size of it but it wasn't really correct in terms of like the length or anything else now this this uh denix here has not been finished off this um this flash hider here uh should be um uh, you know somewhere in there uh, so it's it's going to be even shorter than it should be here but um so but we'll we'll get into that in a sec so let's just go over here for weird in a second oh yeah right all right okay so what i have here and what i've what i've created was is this this uh model of this um of this denix um it's uh it's accurate in terms of the sizing and the length so you can sort of see here that uh i've created this this shape here and i i believe that this shape is very accurate however on all the different holsters there's different they're slightly different shape i believe so you can't just sort of recycle them this holster itself i heard was made from an old cavalry uh holster so if i could figure out which cavalry holster it was then that would make a huge difference but i can't seem to track down the information so it you know it makes it a little bit difficult but the problem with there's two big problems with creating a pattern for this holster and i'm sort of all over the place here now because i'm just i've got notes but i keep coming up with things i want to tell you guys um the biggest problem really with with creating patterns for these things in many ways is that when you're trying to um, reverse engineer something it's a little bit difficult because there's a lot of everything's 3d right so when you try to bring things back into a two-dimensional you know pattern it it's really difficult to do that uh, because you don't it's hard to know those curves so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, I'm going to measure this because what what I realized on my original pattern here was that uh jeez was I re what I realized is that it's just it was too too narrow. I didn't have enough uh space, I don't think, or I didn't give enough uh play here to to do that. And I don't think I have let's put it over here. Where I think that I'm failing right now is I don't have enough space here um, to uh, to wrap around the the blaster correctly. The other part is I don't think I have enough on this side. So when I you know when they're sewn uh, together, they uh, they have that nice you know that, that sort of lip there that you see on there. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do. Let's just measure this, because um, I, I actually haven't done it. I'm going to go from here over the highest point, and back down here. So, a Denix. Yeah, I should go for So... Uh, 
All right, so we're looking at about kind of there. I'm trying to see. Oh, sorry, I get this up. Uh, we're looking at a little, little less than four inches or three inches. A little less than three inches. Uh, looks like uh, two and you know. So with that being said. We can kind of go in here and say we need to um, we need to kind of account for that. So I'm gonna just sort of put in here uh, three inches to start out height. Of So if I was to put that right there, that's where I measured from. Why are we? Okay, so that'll be fine for now. Oh, I know why it's doing. So from there to there, that should be the correct wraparound now. It should be a little less. And that's fine, I'll get to that. Um, so. This here for one second. Now, I'm not going to be too super accurate with it right now because I'm just trying to like I say, like all these things, I don't want to bore you guys for the next six hours while I work on this. But um, I'll start out here by just sort of seeing and you guys sort of see where I'm getting to. So that should be the, the correct amount. Now, this side and this side have to line up, obviously, so you can sew them, but it can't be too far. So this is where this is going to get a little bit hard or difficult, I think, is that, um, you know, it's hard to just judge this thing. Like, it's... I have this lined up right now exactly where... Let's Let's do this. Do this. Okay. Let's take a look at some reference photos so you guys can see. I'm just going to bring all these up and then we'll work our way through. I've got some things I want to tell you guys. Okay. So we have <laughs> thanks Hoppy uh, Hoppy eighty one says uh, I like watching you figure it out the process the process is a nightmare uh, it, like you can see I'm trying to talk my way through it and I'm getting more and more stumbly and just more and more kind of like what am I doing because whenever I start getting into actually the patterns my brain just starts chugging because it's like i'm looking at all and i'll show you guys right now i'll look at all the different um holsters from all the different uh, movies here and you can see that there's just these little things and i was like why is this like this for example let's take a look at this i'm not an expert at leather oh geez now i open them all so be able to find it i'm not an expert at leather so uh when it comes to certain things i don't understand why they're done the way they are um, bear with me here while I find the image. Here we go. I don't understand what this is here. Like, I don't, I'm looking at it, um, and, it, you know, obviously there's a cap on here, but I don't get what this is. Like, you can see the cap inside, and I have a better photo of it. I wish I could quickly find it for you guys. There you go. There's a cap inside here. Uh, that's just a leather and, and sewing this in is quite difficult. I've I've done it once before, but I have no idea what this is. It almost looks like what happened was that somebody came along and said, "Well, I'm going to create the because when you do a a sewing or a, the stitching on leather work like this, what you tend to do is create a uh, a groove there first, and then within that groove you put your you punch your holes for your leather, and um, and then you sew in." You know, then you sew uh, your stitches. 
what it looks like somebody did was created that groove and then decided eh, and just kind of like sold it or randomly like in this weird sort of like all over the place pattern up here and left the groove there why i don't know why i Kind of what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to when you when you sew the the cap in you use those holes as well and you kind of go in and out in and out of those, those holes and it it's really cool because it kind of locks it all in place uh, with the same stitches that you use on the outside but for some reason this is just like completely random like I don't know why this is like this so uh, that's that's my guess I don't think it's two pieces of leather I don't think. Uh, don't think it's the edge i just no i don't know why random so anyway that's something uh to keep in mind with this specific holster but if you go to some of the other ones it's not like that so this is episode four and you can see the episode four looks like it has a slightly different shape uh to it right so this one is is sort of more curved this one doesn't really curve so much. It sort of has a bit of a, almost like a concave shape. And then it sort of goes almost down the same. But the episode uh, five one here almost is almost just straight. Uh, yeah, straight up and down. This one kind of looks like it almost tapers a little bit. And that could be a trick of the eye or the camera or whatever like that. But a little bit different shape. Um, let's see here. Yeah. Let's go the episode seven here is there's not a lot i can't get a lot from the side so it's a little bit of a pain uh the episode six is also very difficult i don't have a lot of you guys will... seconds. just so we get this way now uh, I believe this is the episode six holster. So, you know, very similar, but. Episode six. Okay, cool. Ah, here is, uh, again, here's episode seven. This was what, what I was looking for. Um,. One one of the things you'll notice, or you should notice right off the bat, is that there's no uh, restraining strap, right? Just not on this one. So that's something to keep in mind if you're creating this holster is uh, don't put that on there. There's no button. There's no strap. It's just free, uh, free to sit in there, which is interesting. I'm not sure how that works when you sit down to have a bite to eat and your holster or your blaster falls out. Um... And if you look down here at the bottom, you can sort of see that uh, it's very much how it should be in terms of being sewn on the bottom there. There's not that extra line. Uh, so that those are two like slight differences that you have to sort of keep in mind. Um, but yeah. So where, where I'm at with this and, and I guess where we can go with this is that um the shape here and i believe i have the shape correct uh wh okay. where i was go going with this whole thing is um uh, as i want to show you this is what i was actually looking for so you can see that uh the tip of this ends up uh right in the sort of the center of of this blaster now, like I say, this is difficult because this is not a Denix. This is a cast of a genuine Mauser. It's a resin version, obviously, because you can see the thing looks like it's one solid piece. But it sort of hits there, and then it's sort of uh, it's around there. So let me go back to this two seconds because I actually want to tell you guys something. This this Mauser here is some random version of it that people almost never make I, I don't i think it's the episode six mauser or blast dl44 we'll call it the episode six dl44 in the episode five uh, holster 
you know, thanks to the per person at uh, Lucas Archives who did that because it's fantastic. But it's good in a way because it um, it allows us to kind of see that the different ones will fit in different holsters. But uh, it does fit there, and that's where I've got that. So I believe that I've got this put in the right spot. Now you might be wondering, wow, why is this such a... You have to keep in mind, right, that this is a... Uh, uh, six or seven to eight uh, ounce leather so um, there's going to be a, spa a space here because you have to account for the leather thickness going around there um, but I think that this this is accurate in terms of size so it's 11 uh, and almost 11 a little bit more than 11 and a half inches long and six and uh, a little bit more than six inches wide so um, I think just going Two second. So let's go here. The so six and a little bit wide. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna account for that, but about six, six inches by eleven. So it should be to about eleven and a half. Sorry. So I'm a little bit longer than it should be. Uh, for this but like keep in mind the denix is a little bigger so so i've got it's basically it's it's correct i think um in terms of that where it's not correct is this um the width of this and so that's why i kind of wanted to come in here and say all right good so the difference between uh you know two three blah 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 so okay so how do we do this So I think that's probably more correct. We've got equal space here. I, I, I'll, I'll tweak these obviously because this is just me guessing here. But um, we've got equal space here and here. We've got uh, this. So if it's all correct and the, we take into account the uh, thickness of the leather and we wrap this around, this should now uh, sit on here perfectly because these are mirrored. And it should... Yeah, I should show you guys what I'm doing. So I've... Uh, I've made the distance the same between here and here, and here's that piece that I just put in that I measured. So technically, if this wraps around, it'll hit exactly where it's supposed to hit over there. This one will line up here and should create enough enough room to get the uh, you know, you know, to get the denix in there correctly. So the thing is at this point is I can't really do anything else. I mean, I can kind of go in there and and you know fix these up and say okay goods you know done better than done but problem being obviously is that i need to print this now and i need to try it out and i need to try it out and i need to keep adjusting it until i can look at these photos here um all these photos and it looks exactly like it does here um i want it to be nice and snug like it is here I want it to fall exactly where it should be here. Um, if you look at the blaster, uh, there's this little dent here, and that would be the little dent of the um, of the uh, the feeder path um, there, and then well, then it goes down. I think it probably ends somewhere around here. That's the that's the thing I'm curious about is I don't actually know how much space there is, uh, or how close it comes to this cap. So that's where I have to figure that out. Um, so actually, I want to tell you guys one thing from last week. You know how I speculated that the um, the holster part itself on the episode six is longer. I, I found something that you should take. Find it. Sorry. Ah, perfect. Check out this piece. All right, like look, it's it's definitely falling down on the on the mannequin here. But um, sorry, I'll get these. Up. I'm talking about. Check out this piece here. 
uh, it's definitely like it's falling down on the mannequin. But look at here. Look at this, the length uh, of this part from this corner to this. It looks very, very long. Now, if you go to the episode... Not a really good one here. I did it. Well, you can you can even see see it on here, right? It doesn't look as long from that corner, and the uh, the curve of this of this here it, it seems to be a little bit different as well, even from the episode four one. Um, the episode seven, if I could find it, better wait. Ah. Perfect. So look at the difference here between this episode six, um, the length of this from this corner to here, and the episode seven uh, one. This episode seven one is is really different. It is really different. Uh, it's very short in here. This uh, curve here of this or is very flat comparatively, and. It's very wide. It goes from two inches almost immediately to, you know, whatever this is, five inches or something in here. So don't just, you can't just recycle these. And when you're making your episode six one, uh, I think that it's much longer. And that's why it sits so far down on the knee, uh, where you don't see that so much on the episode five one here, where it, it tends to kind of sit right a little higher. So that makes a little bit of a difference in terms of how to size this part as well, because you have to keep in mind that it, like originally I was uh, using measurements off the knees and stuff like that to try to figure out, okay, well, how long is it? But it really depends on where it sits. Um, so yeah, let's see here where are we at. We're at 13, so hour and minutes. So maybe I won't go too much longer with this i think i'm kind of rambling it's it's really difficult the plan obviously was that i was going to sit here and work on on this uh holster part for all the different ones but the reality is i think you guys can sort of see where i'm coming from uh, that even though i have this set up like this we have a bunch of other holsters that are could, could be slightly different shape uh, I'm not necessarily sure this is falling in the right spot uh, here, but it could be um, because I can't, you know, I can't tell because they have the wrong blaster in the the uh, in the holster here. Um, so unfortunately, I don't I don't know what more I can do for you guys today because. Um, because it's going to take me a while to sort of go through these, get these angles correct, get the, the length correct, uh, double check back and forth, uh, and then print this out and and create a um, either a leather or a foam um, demo just to see uh, or a concept just to, to make sure that it's uh, it's fitting right on the Denix. Um. So maybe what I'll do is um i'll call it a day for now uh and i'll work on this and then next week i'll show you guys the progress that i made and you can kind of take a look and see, we can see if they're if they're if it's working out i'll see if i can print out uh one and get a a um, i'll see if i can reprint this on foam get one that works and uh and if it gets down i'll start working on the i've counted the stitches so I, I can tell you guys how many stitches go from the top to the bottom here and the cap one one last thing i'm going to mention is that i see a lot of people do round caps it's not uh it's a teardrop cap um let's see if i have yeah if you look at it here you can see that it's not it's not round completely round uh, maybe I should put this on here. You can see it's not round here. It's it's um it's a teardrop shape, right? So 
uh, so keep that in mind uh, when you're cutting yours if you're doing it without this pattern just because it's um, a lot of people do it round and there is no hole there uh, a lot of hol uh, holsters um, genuine holsters holsters have a hole there that they use as a drainage um, little drainage hole or whatever it's used for um, or to keep moisture out of there or whatever the case may be this doesn't have it um, I know there's a couple people that are mentioned on the um, on the forums that uh, that the uh, the Indiana Jones holsters some of them have uh, holes but these don't so don't put that in there so I'll create that uh, I'll get it all sorted together uh, create a mock-up and then you guys can take a look and other than that I think that's really all I can show you guys today it, hopefully it gives you a bit of an overview of where I'm going with this and, and all that kind of stuff um, and what work needs to be done to get this portion of it of, of it correct um, just let me think for two seconds if there's anything else I can show you guys to help you out um, I will yeah I'll just sort of mention here if you can if you look at this uh, this pattern here or this shape of this you can sort of see that it's much different this is the episode 4 holster I bring this one up as well and you can see that it's it's not as squared out um, the this is very like it's very wide in here and I think that's to uh, accommodate for the the different um, site on here but on episode four the site um, is quite long and it attaches a little bit differently so I think that this is much narrower here so I'm gonna have to go through there and uh, I'm gonna have to create the different shapes for all these different ones and but I want to get the main the main size of it correct first so it, it make sure that each one of them goes around the denix uh, correctly before I start altering the shapes so I think that that's probably good for today hopefully you guys um, got something out of this uh, thanks to evil Ted Smith and hoppy 81 who commented and checked it out um, and everybody else who will check it out from here on uh, yeah so I think with that um, I'll see you guys next week. All right, bye.